Hey fanboys and fangirls, Longbox Love Affair here with a contest video entry for the Lords of the Longbox, their 1600 subscriber contest. Uh, super congratulations to Lords of the Longbox. I can only aspire to get that many followers at this point. Um, I just uh, reached over 100 followers on my own channel, so I know um, how cool it is to, to continue to grow. And uh, just kudos to Lords of the Lombox. Um, and I'm also a little bit partial because their name is a little similar to mine. Not quite, but uh, I have to say that's pretty awesome. So uh, their contest uh, had some uh, different parts to it, but really they just wanted a short video showcasing uh, convention exclusives. Um, the the Jean Greys that are in front of you are not convention exclusives, but there's a reason why I put them up here, and that will become clear soon. So um, I just I don't have too many convention exclusives on hand um, in my collection that's pushed away with lots of boxes in front of it. I have um, a couple of Civil War variants that were at Wizard World, um, Wizard World of Philly, I believe, and uh, it was like Civil War number one variant um and that was a j scott or i'm sorry no that was a michael turner co variant cover um love that book i'll probably get it cgc'd uh at some point um since i've caught the bug but uh so i have that and i have another one that i think is a michael turner i think it's a world war hulk number one michael turner variant from wizard world as well so but what i'm going to show you is some recent uh variants that i got and then i'm going to show you some sketches that I've uh, commissioned at different conventions recently. So these two comics that you see here are obviously Jean Grey number one variated issues. I mailed away for these, um, the J. Scott Campbell cover. Um, but at the Awesome Con in Washington, D.C. in June, I did pick up the white costume variant, and it's super sweet. I'm super excited to have this, and uh, they limited it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have a witness to see that I purchased this from CGC, so I couldn't CGC this with Signature Series. Um, I bought another copy and had it s signed by the colorist, uh, Sabine Rich, and that's being CGC'd as we speak. So I have two copies, uh, one with Campbell, one with Sabine, um, and excited for those. It's a beautiful cover. I do love this. I'm not a fan of all of his variant covers, but this one is really sweet. And I miss Jean Grey. I wonder when they're going to bring her back. Also, uh, speak of the devil with this contest, it, the timing was just right that there, uh, I bought, um, thanks to uh, SPT Killerwood, I have been getting some spawn issues, and he tipped me off on his one of his videos for this issue. Spawn 275, black and white cover for the Amazing Con. Uh, I believe this was in Las Vegas. Um, cool cover, Todd McFarlane cover, and looks like Ashley Wood. Um, just excited to have this. It came in the mail the other day, just as I learned about this contest. Um, pretty happy with that. I did order it from someone who had a lot of different copies on eBay. It was actually pretty affordable at the time. Um, there is a little indent here. I'm not terribly upset about that. If I get it CGC'd, I may have them press it. Um, let me know what you think, if that's the right thing to do. I'm not sure. So those are my convention uh, exclusives uh, that I have on hand to show. Um, what I also love to do at conventions, I, I never really got into si getting signatures or CGC up until this year. Um, and plus locally, I haven't gone to a whole lot of conventions, but locally uh, the Awesome Con doesn't really draw a huge artistic crowd uh, as of yet. So when I go up to Baltimore for Baltimore Con and, and some other ones, I try to scope out the artists to do sketches for me. And uh, it's pretty awesome. I, I've i had some good luck. So let me get this out of the way and let me get this out. I'll put that to the side. So. I have a bunch that I want to show off. I was waiting for the right time to show this off in a video. Um, so several years ago, George Perez came, and you'll re this will look familiar from, uh, I think it's the Doom 143, but I got a Thanos uh, Infinity Gauntlet in 2014. And these are all in the sketchbook still. I'm debating whether to keep them in or... or put them into some plastic or something. I kind of like the idea of having the sketchbook hole. Um, 
so just super sweet. A uh, friend of mine got Phoenix uh, when he saw that I got a sketch. George was had a huge line. He signed all, all weekend. He drew sketches. Uh, and you didn't have to reserve anything. So he was very hospitable. Uh, so in addition to that, that same convention, Jim Kelly Fiore, a big, oops, a big uh, Valiant guy back in the day, and most of you know that I'm into Valiant quite a bit. Um, I had him do this rye. Uh, really, I was psyched about this. So I got that sketch in that convention. I was spoiled. It was a, it was the second year of the convention. It wasn't that busy. Um, I'm just gonna get this stand out of the way. And then, also at that convention, let me pull this up without getting it ruined. Joe Rubenstein was there, and he's been an inker and an artist on many Marvel things, and I had him do Wolverine. Pretty sweet Wolverine. I think he did the Wolverine limited series, he did some other things. So I was very fortunate, I had three sketches in one weekend. That's unheard of. Uh, most artists are very busy, so I was excited to get this. And there's more, there's more. The following year, I was battling a fever, but I had a three-day pass. So I was like, let me go the first day and see what I can get. I had a mission, Tom Rainey, with a beautiful havoc. Just amazing. I love his work. This piece is pretty sweet. And that was the following year. And then, at Baltimore Comic Con, Mike Manley was just hanging out, and I was in a Darkhawk phase, and I still am, I love Darkhawk, and he did the whole friggin' Darkhawk for me. I thought I was just gonna get a bust, and it was like 50, 60 bucks or something like that, maybe it was 80. Um, so this was in 2015, Baltimore Comic Con. He did it while I stood there, um, then I was like, oh, I might just want to walk around, I, th I wasn't sure how long he'd take. Um, he took forever to do it, but I'm so grateful, this is an amazing Darkhawk sketch. Super excited to get that. See, these are just awesome sentimental things. I remember when I when I picked them up. Um, and then another year at Awesome Con, Mike McCone, Spidey. Really kind of a cool trading card look to it. Um, so was excited to have that. I don't know if that's my last one or not. Yeah, so that was the last one I got. Um, and then I've struck out the past couple conventions, so Awesome Con this year didn't really have any artists that I wanted to invest in. Um, I wanted to get a Greg Capullo, but my hunch was that he was not going to take any sketches, um, or that he'd be too pricey. He was always busy signing. Uh, and then um, at Baltimore last year, I got there on Saturday, and that was too late to get the people I wanted. I wanted Nick Bradshaw, love his work. Uh, I wanted um, Simonson, uh, Walt Simonson, um, so we'll see this year if I um, am able to get up there and, and get get this, but um, that's what makes conventions special, special for me. I love the variant covers if it's something I collect, and I love the sketching opportunities, and now I'm trying to get signatures if there's a CGC rep. So that's my story. That's my Lords of the Long Box submission. I'm going to hashtag Lords1600 uh, in the post. I'm going to put their link in, in my description here. So check them out. Uh, and uh, this is all for our convention exclusives that they are doing through KRS Comics. So congrats again, Lords. And I will see everyone shortly. Thanks. Bye-bye.